Luce is an awkward, often clueless teenager. This is part of what makes her rather relatable to the audience. Owl House showrunner Dana Terra said in a recent AMA she did on Reddit that main characters are hard, and that Luce is thus one of the hardest characters for her to write on that show. Now, I get where she's coming from. I don't know if I necessarily agree that main characters are innately hard, but when you're working on a show like this, one that appeals to a younger audience, you have to face the challenge of making a main character who is relatively sympathetic, while also making them interesting. They need to be someone the audience can see themselves as, while also someone they're intrigued by, and that can be a hard balance. For the most part, I think the Owl House succeeds in doing that with Luce. No, she's not perfect but her flaws are relatively relatable and sympathetic flaws. The imperfections that she has are more that she's impulsive and that she's drifting off in her own little world, and less that she has, like, a fatal flaw that is going to cause her downfall. However, there is one aspect of her character that, while being relatable, might um, make her a little more unsympathetic because it kind of infuriates us as the audience and that is just how dense she is and how incapable she is of seeing the attraction that other people especially Amity have for her. Now if you're not particularly invested in this relationship this might not be a big thing but for those of us who are we might be left just face palming in dismay seeing her this oblivious to the obvious affections of Amity. Now, this is of course not an uncommon character trait. I reckon that a lot of us could name off the top of our heads a half dozen anime protagonists who are oblivious to the feelings of those around them. This is because a lot of the romantic tension in these uh, shows is powered by the will they or won't they dynamic, and for that, it works best if you have one person whose feelings are clear and another person who is kind of oblivious. If both characters have affections toward each other but are unaware of it, that can be kind of frustrating, especially in a long-form narrative format like a television show. And on the other side of the coin, if both characters are aware of their affections toward each other, and then they admit those affections, that's great for them, but then there is no romantic tension. Now, that does not mean there is no tension at all between these characters, and if I'm being honest, I kind of prefer the kind of uh, tension that exists between characters who are in a relationship than the kind of tension that exists between one character who is clearly attracted to another character and, and the other character who is just oblivious. Relationships can be really distinct and interesting and I love studying how they work in uh, a lot of different stories and a lot of different dynamics in those stories. Whereas the uh, will they or won't they dynamic with one person just being completely oblivious can get old a little quick if it's not done right. That said, it can be done right, of course. Enough of my personal biases. The dynamic wherein one character has a crush on the other and the other is not aware of it is popular among uh, television showrunners because it is a dynamic they can drag out. It's very well suited for long-form storytelling like television. There are a lot of near misses, a lot of almosts, a lot of not quites. Meanwhile, the uh, one character remains completely clueless as to the affections of the other. That is the position we are at right now in regards to the relationship between Luce and Amity on the Owl House. Amity knows that she loves Luce, and we know this as the audience, but we do not know what Luce thinks of Amity romantically, and we might not know that for a while. This is, of course, because Luce is consistently unable to pick up on the cues that Amity sends, and 
I must admit these cues are not particularly subtle. Amity consistently gets flustered and she blushes when around loose. While well, Amity, mired in nervousness, makes the decision to not tell Luz that she meant to invite her to this prom-like event called Grom. Amity does dance with Luz at this event, and it is not a platonic dance. The uh, romantic undercurrents are quite evident. While it is not distressingly sensual, it is rather tender and intimate. The idea that two people can semi-spontaneously come together and dance like this and have it be so tender and very close and very intimate, and then for it not to be romantic is just ludicrous. One might think that Luz caught up in this whirlwind of emotions implied by this dance might admit her feelings toward Amity, or at least acknowledge the depth of Amity's feelings, which have been very evident this whole time. But Luce doesn't. Luce can't, it appears. Instead, she resorts to willful ignorance. It's interesting that we're held back a little from seeing Luce's feelings romantically. She is our protagonist, so normally we're very close with her. Our perspective as the audience is very close to her perspective. But here, her perspective is kind of obfuscated from us. What does she think about Amity? Does she view Amity romantically, or not? Or does she just view Amity as a friend? We don't know. We're kind of kept in the dark about that as the audience. It's possible that she could have some of these more romantic feelings and just never say it. A lot of her actions, at least once they start becoming closer to each other, can be read as either romantic or platonic, which must drive Amity mad. Imagine being Amity in this situation, it must be incredibly difficult. She probably interprets it either as Luce sending mixed signals, or Luce unintentionally engaging in gestures she does not comprehend that Amity would take as romantic. But there's always this level of disconnect between them. It's the kind of relationship where I think it's pretty obvious to us, the audience, that Amity is spending a lot more time thinking of Luce than the other way around. I'm not sure how much time Luce spends thinking about Amity. Even when they're uh, down in the library early-ish in season one, Amity admits that she's not sure what to think about Luce. You can tell that she has been thinking a lot about Luce recently, and she just is unable to come to a conclusion. She's unable right then to just reconcile these different images of Luce in her mind. For one, she thinks of Luce as this bully, this person who's stopping her from being this perfect model student who receives all the accolades and all the acclaim. And on the other hand, Luce has not demonstrated any enmity toward her. Luce cares about her, and setting aside uh, the romantic question, Luce clearly wants to be close to her and wants to at least be her friend. Amity has a lot of questions to work through. Now, some of these she does work through. She gets over the contradiction of these two versions of Luz, the person who knocks her down and the person who cares about her, and realizes that there isn't a contradiction, that Luz didn't knock her down, she was just arrogant, and that Luz does care about her, and that she, Amity, should at least try to be Luz's friend, and she does, and uh, as a result, Amity does become more confident, she becomes more sure of herself, she becomes more caring, or at least more willing to demonstrate the caring side of herself instead of suppressing it. But she still does not know what Luce thinks of her romantically. It could be that Luce knows that Amity has these affections in some way and just doesn't want to admit it to Amity. Now, why would that be? 
One reason would be that Luz does not return these affections and just doesn't want to break Amity's heart. This makes me think of uh, Gravity Falls and the relationship between Dipper and Wendy. Dipper, throughout season one of that show, is constantly slobbering over Wendy. His affections are very evident and not particularly subtle. But of course, he thinks that he's so suave and so smooth. And because we, the audience, are tied to his perspective and tied to his version of events, we believe him. He believes that Wendy doesn't see him because he's a kid, he's like 12, almost 13 at this point, who does not see the world outside himself, whereas we, the audience, assume Wendy doesn't notice him because of genre conventions. It's kind of expected that in a show like this, people show very obvious affections or reveal very obvious things about themselves and other people aren't aware. But then we get into season two and it's revealed that Wendy knew all along. Of course she did. She's not dumb or ignorant. She just didn't want to say anything because she knows they can't be together. She's much older than him. She's like 16 and he's almost 13. His crush on her is just a childish crush. That doesn't mean it's not serious or that it doesn't matter to him, but it's not something that she can reciprocate. Of course, no obvious blockage like that exists between Luce and Amity. Their orientations are compatible, as uh, Dana Terrace has said, and uh, they are about the same age, and they're in about the same place in their lives, and they spend a lot of time together. There is no reason why they can't be together. But we should still consider, is this like the Wendy Dipper sh scenario I described previously? Could it be that Luce really isn't as dense as we all think she is, and that she actually does understand Amity's feelings toward her and just hasn't responded for whatever reason? And we'll get into those reasons a little later. Well, it is possible. I would not say it's the most likely explanation. The most likely explanation is that she really is just that dense and just that off in her own little world. Again, this is a common trait for uh, protagonists to have. But I find the idea that she does know and that she just hasn't figured out what to say even more interesting. Now it is possible, like with the Wendy scenario I described previously, that she just doesn't feel the same way toward Amity that Amity feels toward her. But we have no reason to believe that, so if you are a fan of that pairing, I don't think you should be despondent. It is not the only explanation. It is just as possible, and perhaps more possible, more plausible, that... Luz hasn't responded because she doesn't know what to say. True, Luz is not as socially awkward as Amity. Amity is just crippled by uh, the awareness of what other people might think of her, but Luz either can't tell or doesn't care, so she just charges ahead. But it is possible that Luz is still holding something back, that she's anxious, that she has the same fear as Amity, that she's kind of afraid of this relationship and she doesn't know if she can really commit to it yet. And she doesn't know if it can really work for her, even though she might be excited about it. It's kind of the same feeling that Amity has toward her. Now, hopefully they can get over these anxieties, these hesitations, this lack of confidence and come together. I really like this pairing and I want it to succeed. But the only way it can succeed is if they are both willing to be open, and I really hope they are. But that's just a part of growing up, learning to put yourself out there and take risks for what you really care about. 
So I really hope they will be able to admit their feelings toward each other. They deserve each other's company. So thank you all for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to like and comment and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you can and you want to see more videos like this. Keep watching The Owl House. It's a lovely little gem of a show. And I'm really interested to see where it goes from here. You have a lot of interesting things going on and there are a lot of interesting possibilities. So where will they take it? I'm especially interested to see where they take the relationship between these two. It's an interesting relationship. No, it's not the most important relationship in the show, perhaps. And it's certainly not the only relationship in the show, but it is one that a lot of people are invested in, myself included, and I want to see where they go with it. So anyway, tune in soon for my next analysis. It will be coming soon. Thank you all again. Adios, comrades.